Welcome back to the Ice Bath Sports Podcast. I'm Matt, and I'm all alone this week. Uh, no Griff, he's MIA. I'm not talking Miami. Uh, he can't make it for this episode. He's, I think, in a darkness retreat somewhere following that Jets loss to the Steelers on Sunday night. Uh, real quick, Steelers beat them 37-15. to uh, You know, Russell Wilson's first start as a Steeler. Um, great way to start for, if you're the Steelers. Not a great way to start if you're the Jets. You're 2-5. and five. Kind of on the outside looking in right now. You just made a big splash in the Devontae Adams trade. Uh, we talked about it last week. Go check out that episode. You haven't listened to it yet. Uh, but, man, I'm not going to spend too much time on the Jets because I feel like we do every week. But um, I'm, I'm sure we're going to have a, a Griff rant, another one in the future. But uh, week seven was uh, definitely a interesting week, to say the least. I know I feel like we've been saying that every week, but every week has kind of uh, had its own unique twist. Um, I felt like this week was the week of the running backs. The running back position really, uh, you know, had a, had a, a big role. Uh, it, one of the, the biggest running back stories was the Saquon Barkley revenge game. As we all know, Saquon Barkley departed the New York Giants, where they drafted him with the second overall pick in the 2018 draft, to join the division rival Philadelphia Eagles. Um, and this was his first time returning to the G-Men uh, in MetLife, actually, uh, here in Week 7. Uh, Barkley ran for 176 rushing yards. Let me say that one more time. 176 rushing yards. That's crazy. Uh, that, that's, that's a lot of yardage, man. And, uh, especially off of 17 carries, anytime you're averaging 10 yards carrying the NFL, uh, you're pretty, pretty, pretty good. Doing pretty damn good there. Um, yeah. Eagles win a blowout 20 to three. Sigmund also ran for a touchdown against his former team. Uh, what a blowout, uh, 20 to three. Um, Eagles fans love to see that score. Falcons fans, not so much. Uh, Hertz only attempted 14 passes in this game. Uh, I mean, that's not a lot of passes uh, for a quarterback in today's NFL. Uh, He did go for 114 yards and one touchdown passing with another 22 yards and two touchdowns rushing. Uh, Big fantasy day from Hertz. Uh, A.J. Brown also savaged his fantasy day with a long touchdown. He went five catches, 89 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown. And uh, I think the biggest highlight of this game was probably the Eagles D showing up with eight sacks. Now, the Eagles D has been a little up and down. It's been a roller coaster this, this season. Uh, Vic Fangio finally got them boys playing good over there. Uh, Nicobe Dean had two sacks. Jalen Carter, two sacks. Uh, the Georgia boys were out in full effect this game. And uh, it's good to see, you know. Um, e- Eagles uh, have invested uh, a lot into their defense over the past couple of drafts, um, mainly from, the D- uh, from Georgia. But... To see these guys actually start to develop uh, is, is very exciting, especially seeing what they did when they were played for Georgia. Uh, Giants, man, talk about another New York team that's 2-5, and five, uh, kind of trending in the wrong direction. Not what you want to see here. Um, you know, probably going to see a, a lot of changes made there this offseason. Now, uh, let's jump over uh, while we're on the NFC East. Uh, how about Washington? They commanded a blowout against the Panthers, but you know, with, with that good news comes bad news. Uh, Jaden Daniels exits the game early with a rib injury. His status is questionable going forward. You know, he hasn't really practiced this week. Um, as of the time I record this, I'm not sure if he will, if he's going to suit up for this, uh, this, this week. Um, yeah, I, I He's a young, talented quarterback. He looks to be your franchise. Uh, I think if you're Washington, you don't want to risk it. You, you know, you have Marcus Mariota, who's a very, very capable backup, uh, and he showed that against the Panthers. He stepped in, and uh, he was 18 of 23 for 205 passing yards and two passing touchdowns uh, with another 34 yards rushing. So, pretty efficient. Uh, the Panthers uh, got destroyed 40-7. to seven. Uh, The commanders are putting up points. Uh, Terry McLaurin and Ertz, Zach Ertz, both having solid days. Uh, McLaurin was six um, for 98, six catches, 98 yards, while Ertz was four catches, 40 yards, and a touchdown. Um, Scott Hansen said it right after uh, me and my old man said it uh, during the game, but Mariota, when he threw that pass to Zach Ertz, you would have thought it was like 2017. Um, 
you 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 did not think it was 2024 that Marcus Mariota was throwing a pass to Zach Ertz. That is probably what Chip Kelly envisioned for the Eagles, uh, going back to his days there in Philly. But, um, hey, if it works, it works. Good for Ertz. You know, this is a guy that kind of has turned into a journeyman after his uh, you know time with Philly. Been with Cardinals. Uh, spent a little time with the Lions. Now he's in with the Commanders. Hey, you know, get paid. You know, hopefully uh, win some games. Can't really root for him because he's a commander. But uh, Andy Dalton had a horrible game, though. He went 11 for 16, 93 yards, zero touchdowns, and two interceptions. Uh, whew. You know, Andy Dalton, I, I, I said this, I believe, last last episode, but what, if you're if you're Carolina, you're obviously a dumpster fire right now. You're not doing well. You're not playing well. Um, why would you stick with the thirty what five year old quarterback, veteran quarterback, who isn't really going to win you games, isn't really going to bring much to the team? Uh, yeah, he he might win you one or two games, but go to the young guy you traded everything for, uh, and and get him some valuable reps. I don't get it. Like you have a twenty three year old quarterback. Um, you took first pick in the draft, what, two years ago now? Um, you haven't really put him in the best situation to succeed. And, you know, after one year, you're really going to give up on him. Uh, they, they, they did say they're putting him back in this week, but I mean, they should have never taken him out to begin with. They, they his confidence is probably friggin' destroyed. Um, you know, do I want to be a starter for Carolina for week six? I mean, maybe for the paycheck, but um, not if I'm playing quarterback and I'm just going to get destroyed by that offensive line. You don't really have too many great weapons over there in Carolina. Um, However, you know, get this guy, this young guy, the reps, get him, get him some time to, to develop. Um, That's kind of what the Patriots are doing over there in new England. They don't have anything, but Drake may's balling out. Uh, We can jump over to that game actually really quick. That was the London game this week. Uh, and the Jaguars did put a hurting on the Patriots, but uh, yeah, 32-16. But Drake May looked pretty solid. He was 26-37, 276 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, no interceptions, did take two sacks, but he's doing a lot better at avoiding the pressure than Jacoby Brissett ever did uh, in, in the last few games he played. Uh, he also had three carries, 18 yards. They could not get it going on the ground. Ramondre Stevenson had the most carries uh, on the team with seven, and he only totaled 18 yards. Uh, run game was non-existent. But that also happens when you're getting blown out. Uh, I mean, Trevor Lawrence didn't really do a lot of the damage, 15-20, 193 yards, one touchdown. But Tank Bigsby, uh, speak of, you know, a tank, he, he, he did a lot of damage. 26 carries, 118 yards, two touchdowns, rushing, uh, no catches. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Going back to the whole Bryce Young, Drake May situation, uh, you, you know your season's kind of in the gutter, right? You know it's in the toilet. Um, you know, maybe you, you win some games and maybe you flirt with, like, a, a playoff spot, you know, a little towards the end of the season. But, you know, you're in a rebuild year. You, you know this coming into to this this season. Uh, why, why not, you know, get the young guy in there and get him familiar with the offense? familiar with his teammates, some live game reps. You cannot emulate that in practice uh, and see what you got, you know, see what you got. Uh, let's jump over. Uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to pivot a little bit. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to kind of go through uh, and, and, and just talk about my thoughts in some of these games. Um, that was the only game. I'm not even going to touch on that Thursday night game. Broncos destroyed the saints 33, 10. I, uh, Man, Javante Williams was really the only bright spot in that game. I didn't even watch the whole game, to be truthful with you, because I got so bored um, about halfway through. But Seahawks uh, break their uh, losing skid. They win 34-14, absolutely crushing the Falcons. Uh, Bijan had a solid game. Uh, DK Metcalf got hurt. Uh, Kev Walker, two-touchdown game. Love to see that. Um He's a guy that's really emerged as a fantasy star this year. Uh, Bills blow out the Titans. Uh, we do have some Titans news that I'll get to in a second. 
Josh Allen is killing it on the air. I want to put some respect on Josh Allen's goddamn name because this guy, this is a guy that has always been known for his turnovers, right? This is a guy that last year had 18 interceptions and everybody, everybody was clowning on him. But Josh Allen in 2024? No, no. Yeah, turnovers? What's that? He has one turnover on the year and it's a fumble. This guy is passing, he's passed for 1,483 yards, 12 touchdowns, zero interceptions, has the best QBR in the league right now with a 77.6, and that's not even counting his rushing production where he's put up 179 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns. So 15 touchdowns, one turnover, 1,500 passing yards. Like, he's killing it right now. He, I think he's the MVP front runner, uh, especially since he's done it up until this point without really a wide receiver one. Uh, they just traded for Mark Cooper, as we touched on last episode. Um, but, you know, the, the, to, to have been doing what he's been doing with his reputation, um, you know, I think this is just amazing. We, we are seeing, I think, somebody that could be uh, rivaling Mahomes for GOAT status. Uh, you know, I mean... The only thing that Allen doesn't have is the Super Bowl rings. That's obviously a pretty big deal. Uh, but, you know, if Josh Allen wins one or two, uh, I think he starts putting himself in, you know, uh, the, the, the the conversation of at least, like, top 20. Because the numbers he's put up over the past, you know, four previous seasons have been unreal. Um, and he's only 28. He's still got a lot of good ball ahead of him. Uh, good on Josh Allen, man. He's killing it. Uh, big Josh Allen stand right here. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they, they killed the Titans. Um, Bengals beat the Browns, uh, Packers won a close one, uh, and against Houston, but, uh, Stroud didn't do much in this game. He went 10 for 21, which was the date the other day, actually, uh, 86 passing yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. It's a clean game, not a flashy game. Uh, you know, it was really the Joe Mixon show, 115 yards, two touchdowns. Um, but they did lose to the Packers, who, uh, you know, had a pretty solid day. Jordan Love spread the ball around, uh, 24 of 33, 220 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. Now, I'm not just going to sit here and read the box scores all day to you. Um, just kind of highlighting, you know, Lions won a close one against the Vikings. Dave Montgomery looked like he got hurt. Uh, Brock Bowers, um was a bright spot in that Rams Raiders game. Rams won 20 to 15, but Bowers had 10 catches, 93 yards without Adams. Um, as we predicted last episode, this guy is going to eat. He is, he's unreal. He's on a different level. Um, and you know, if you're Sam Laporta, you're kind of upset. Cause yeah, this is a guy that, uh, set all these records last year as a rookie tight end and is getting upstaged the next year by a better tight end. Truthfully. Um, Chiefs beat the Niners. Niners, you know, obviously a, a devastating blow, losing Brandon Ayuk, uh, torn ACL and I believe MCL. That's a tough break. Good thing he got paid though. That's why these players need to get paid. Um, you know, because you you can't predict injuries. You could be the healthiest guy on the field. You could be the most athletic person of all time. Uh, this is a very very intense sport, and there's no way you can prepare for an injury. Like you can prepare to prevent injuries, but like the, the injuries are just so random, you know, you could just be stepping the wrong way or getting hit the wrong way. Uh, another guy that, you know, unfortunately we lost for the season with a horrible injury, Chris Godwin, horrible ankle injury, Mike Evans as well. Uh, you know, out for, uh, till I believe week 11, uh, he had a hamstring injury, Todd Bowles. What the hell are you thinking? Sending him out there. Uh, he worsened it after diving for a, a touchdown pass that he dropped. Um, you know why? Cause his hamstring gave out on him. Uh, but yeah, no, I, the Bucks receiving core, um, absolutely depleted, uh, after the loss on Monday night to the Ravens, 41, 31. Uh, and, and how about Lamar Jackson? This is another guy that's rivaling Josh Allen for that MVP, uh, title this this season 17 to 22 281 passing yards five touchdowns um another 52 rushing yards on the ground crazy this that's just that's like a madden madden stat line right there uh his rating was 158.1 that's what point two away from a perfect passer rating 
absolutely <laughs> unfathomable. That's crazy. Good on Lamar Jackson. Uh, good for him. Uh, this is, you know, everybody was doubting him coming into the league. He's a two-time MVP. Um, just the one question remains, how's he going to do in the postseason? How's he going to fare uh, when it actually, you know, uh, matters a little more, when there's a lot more pressure on the line? But uh, the, the one thing I want to touch on before I get into my uh, Week 8 picks is, as I said, there was Titans news. Um, the Titans traded wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins to the Chiefs. Unless you've been under living under a rock, uh, you've probably heard about this and know about this. Um, they traded Hopkins to Kansas City for a conditional 2025 fourth round pick. Um, so it's really a fifth round pick, but I believe if DeAndre Hopkins plays in 60% more or more snaps this season, uh, I want to say from the time he was traded, uh, don't quote me on that, uh, and they make it to the Super Bowl, then that turns into a fourth. I'd say that's a pretty good uh, trade for Kansas City. Um, I mean, obviously, Mahomes doesn't really have anybody right now. Uh, they lost Rasheed Rice and Marquise Brown to their starting receivers to season-ending injuries. Uh, and, uh, you know, Hopkins is a guy that has been very, very productive in his career. Um, on, his, on this total for his career, he has 12,528 receiving yards, 79 receiving touchdowns. Um, that's cumulative. And he's also recorded seven 1,000-plus-yard seasons. Now, I think as we've gotten into more a of a uh, passing league uh, over the last, you know, 10, 20 years, um, I think judging receivers based on 1,000-yard seasons uh, isn't exactly the most optimal way to, uh, you know, <laughs> decipher who's good and who's not. Um, but I do think it's a, a, a safe benchmark, right? Um you know, if a guy's played all 16 games, you kind of want to see him pass that 1,000-yard mark. Um, tight end's a little different. You know, tight ends, uh, it's it's a great thing if you can pass that 1,000 thousand yards. But receivers, uh, definitely a lot easier to do in today's NFL. Um, no, I, I think Casey uh, obviously is hoping to get a glimpse of that version of DeAndre Hopkins. You know, the one uh, that we, we saw late in Houston back when Deshaun Watson wasn't a horrible person. And was actually a solid quarterback. Um, Hopkins was balling back then. And uh, he's not been balling this season, though. Through six games in Tennessee this year, Hopkins uh, has only had 15 catches, 173 yards, and one touchdown. Hopefully, you know, he's going to get, you know, rejuvenated with uh, Patrick Mahomes throwing him. But, um, you know, this is a big, big, uh, big question mark here. Because Mahomes hasn't really uh, had the best season, um, yeah, he's he, Mahomes has really slowed down. I mean, stats don't always paint the the picture. They haven't needed him. Their defense has been playing so well. They are six and zero, uh, but Mahomes just you know aesthetically, his stats are horrible. In six games, uh, he is completing just under sixty eight percent of his passes. But he only has 1,389 passing yards, six touchdowns, and eight interceptions. Not what you want to see from uh, the quote-unquote best quarterback in the league. But it's not going to matter because once the playoff comes, playoffs come, he's he's going to ball out. Um, yeah, and I, the Chiefs are just hoping that this 32-year-old receiver um, in Hopkins can provide Mahomes with uh, a more reliable option. Um, in the receiving game, it helps that he, you know, he's a veteran. He's coached up a lot of the young guys in the, in the locker room, like your, uh, your Sky Moores, um, guys that haven't really panned out. Um, and you know, he's playing, I, I guess, opposite of Travis Kelsey. He's playing on the same offense as Travis Kelsey. Um, you know, they're just going to help each other cause they're going to draw coverage for, for one another. So I do think all in all, this is a great trade for Kansas city. You look on Tennessee's side of things. Uh, I mean, what, what, what are they getting there? They might get a fourth round pick, a fifth round pick, unless you're, you're, you know, uh, lucky and you draft a Puka Nakua, uh, in the fifth round, you're most, most likely, I, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say you are not going to replenish, um, the superstar you had in Hopkins, even though he was on the tail end of his career and wasn't, you know, faring that well. Uh, 
yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think you're really going to get much of a contributor in the fifth round. Um, fourth possibly, but I, I, I think, you know, if, if, if you want, you know, a, a safe pick, you know, obviously first round is great. Second and third round are kind of the, 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 the key, um, areas there in my opinion. Um, but I can also see why you wouldn't want to give up more than a fourth for a 32 year old receiver. If you're the chiefs, you know, you don't want to throw, throw it all in on this year when you can continue to build for the future. So yeah. Uh, interesting there. Uh, I think Hopkins fancy value skyrockets now. Um, I know I picked him up in a couple of weeks, so let's, uh, let's, let's see how, how he performs. You know, he might need a, a week or two to get acclimated to that offense, but once he is, I have no doubt he's probably going to be at least a wide receiver three. Now, I'm sure you're uh, probably sick of me yapping about what's already happened. Um, what you're here for is what's going to happen, right? Um, well, maybe some of you. I don't know. Different strokes for different folks. Am I right? Uh, let's just go, go into Matt's week eight picks. Uh, kicking it off Thursday night football, we have the Minnesota Vikings at the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Rams getting Cooper Cup back. And the Vikings probably getting TJ Hawkinson back. Uh, I think this is going to be a good game. I think it could be a very high-scoring game. Uh, you know, Rams, I don't think, are going to be able to hold Justin Jefferson. Vikings defense has held up very, very good lately. But they did get cooked by Monter St. Brown last week. Um, you know, working out of the slot. I think Cooper Cup this week, you know, who's back, working out of the slot, could also... Uh, see a lot of production. I got to go with the Vikings here. The Vikings uh, just doubling down. Their defense has been playing really well. They're coming off a loss against the Lions in a heartbreaker, 31-29. And this is a team that's, that's you know, riding a high. You know, they need to rebound. If, if they lose this game, uh, I think we could see them going on a little bit of a skid. But I don't see them losing this game. I think Brian Flores has had that defense playing really well. Um, and the Rams, uh, you know, two and four. Yeah. The two and four, not really playing the best ball. I mean, they barely beat the Raiders last week. Right. So, uh, I, I need, I need to see it from the Rams before I can take them, especially against the Vikings who are still arguably as of right now, top five team in the league. Give me the Vikings on Thursday night. Uh, going to the Sunday games. We have no London game this week. Philly at Cincinnati. Uh, my Philadelphia Eagles going into Cincy. Uh, this is going to be a, a fun game for Jason Kelsey, most likely, because uh, he's, he's went to Cincinnati for college. Um, but Philly, uh, this is going to be a shootout, man. Uh, Philly's defense, I said earlier, they have been playing a lot better. Um but I worry how they're going to fare against Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And Joe Burrow uh, has been slicing and dicing lately as well. Uh, he's got 1,750 yards, 14 touchdowns, two interceptions on the year. He's 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 cooking. Uh, Joe Cool. So, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm really on the fence. I, I got to go, my boys. I got to go, Philly. Um, you know, we they came off the bye and... Uh, did we did we play the Giants right off the bye? Uh, no, we played the Browns right off the bye, right? Uh, I'm so lost here. All right, we, we've had a bye in the last couple of weeks. Um, excuse my my rambling. And you know, I feel like we haven't seen the full potential of this offense. Um, you you blew out the Giants, and now I I. I think uh you have, you kind of have to show teams what you got i think this is a big statement game against cincy uh cincy looking to rebounds uh as well though they're uh they've won what their last two games or something the three and four they're right back in the in that contention um eagles four and two give me philly though i think philly wins in a shootout baltimore at cleveland give me baltimore cleveland has not looked good uh they got chubb back didn't matter uh, Ravens are rolling. They just destroyed Tampa Bay on Monday night. Talk about statement games there. Um, I do I do worry about Baltimore's defense long term, but uh, I mean Cleveland is probably one of the worst teams in the league right now. Give me Baltimore. 
Moving on, we have the Tennessee Titans at the Detroit Lions. Man, that's that's tough for the Titans. I mean, they, obviously they're they're selling right. They're sellers right now at the trade deadline. They moved Hopkins to the Chiefs. They also traded um, Ernest Jones, uh, the fourth, to the Seahawks for Jerome Baker uh, and a fourth round pick. So they're they're collecting the fourth and fifth round picks there. Those those day three, early day three picks. Um, but yeah, they're they're sellers here at the trade deadline. Titans. So. I don't really see them winning many games going forward this season. And the Lions are just one of the best teams in the league. I mean, we saw it last week. I feel like we see it almost week in, week out. Detroit is just on another level. Jared Goff is on another level. You know, I've talked about Lamar. I've talked about Josh Allen. Jared Goff is probably the other quarterback that's in that MVP conversation. Um, 1,600 passing yards, 10 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. But he... Over the last couple of games, he's had a crazy completion percentage. Right, so, so he has a completion percentage of seventy three point six percent on the year. But over the last two games, um, I mean, he he's been killing it. Uh, yeah. So he was uh, against Seattle uh, three weeks ago, eighteen of eighteen. Against Dallas uh, two weeks ago, eighteen of twenty five. Against the Vikings this past week, twenty two of twenty five. He's he's playing really really well, really good football for Jared Goff. Love to see it. You know the Rams gave up on him, and uh, Detroit didn't, and and he's balling out for Detroit. Detroit by like thirty. Arizona at Miami. Uh, I think Tua is back this game. I think Tua is back. Arizona coming off a sloppy win against the Chargers. Not impressed with them whatsoever. Not impressed with Marvin Harrison Jr. whatsoever. Um, I I, I didn't own many shares of him this year i do own him in one league um but what a letdown he's a very very boomer bust for somebody that was supposed to be one of the best receiver prospects we've seen in a while um he's really not doing all that great um but yeah miami with two coming back give me them uh you know i think tyree kill goes back to being a top five fantasy receiver i think jalen waddle retains some of his value once again and I just I think Tua was the glue that Miami needed to bring them together. Give me Miami by like a score. I do think they they will be a little rusty coming out the gate though. Um, Jets at New England is our next game. I gotta go Jets. I mean the Jets. This this is a must win if you're the Jets. Um, if you lose the Patriots, you got a lot of bigger problems. If you're the Jets, uh, like I said before, you you, you trade for De- for uh, Devontae Adams. And then you, you're going to lose the next two games after you trade for him? No. They need to get something going here. Hopefully, now that uh, Adams has had time to adjust to this Jets offense, um, it will look a little different. Um, I I just I don't think New England is a very good team. I think they're uh, within that, that Tennessee conversation. Give me the Jets. J-E-T-S. Jets, 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 baby. Uh, Atlanta at Tampa. Now, this is an interesting game. Uh, these these games uh, from the, the between NFC South teams are always a coin flip. You know, I feel like you never know what's going to happen, who to trust. Uh, but Atlanta coming off a, lo- a big loss to Seattle. I know Tampa's coming off the loss to the Ravens, but they lost Chris Godwin for the year. Mike Evans is going to be out. Uh, you know, lots going to be on Baker's shoulders, and I'm not sure he can perform without his two starting receivers. Um Atlanta, on the other hand, you know, they they, they look all right. They look solid. Uh, Kirk Cousins getting healthier every week, getting more confident in that offense every week. I, I, I like Atlanta here going into Tampa and winning. Uh, Green Bay at Jacksonville. Now, I almost, I want to pick Jacksonville. I think this could be a, a, a big upset game. I think this could be a rat. Um I, I I think Jacksonville. I mean, you are coming across back across the pond, um, but you're home. Green Bay having to travel south. I mean, on paper, Green Bay should win this game nine times out of ten. But football is weird like that, where I could see the Jaguars winning. And I really know I shouldn't be picking games off of gut feeling, but uh, if Jacksonville can get it going with Tank Bigsby on the ground early, 
Um, if they can force Green Bay to pass, if they can get some pressure on Jordan Love, I think they really do have a chance here. And I think all those all those things uh, are very realistic for Jacksonville to do. Um, you know, they, they've kind of dug themselves a little bit of a hole that they need to climb out of. They're two and five. Um, but who's to say they don't have as much of a chance to uh, make the playoffs as like the Jets, you know? Um, another two and five team that's severely underperformed. Um, you know, the Jags win this game, you know, maybe they, they, they catch some momentum, a little lightning in the bottle. Uh, but if you lose this game, your season's probably over. So this is a big game for Jacksonville Packers five and two. They need to win this game to stay afloat. I had green Bay marked down, but I've talked myself into Jacksonville. Give me Jacksonville by a field goal. I'm, I'm locking it in. I'm switching my picks. Uh, Indian Houston, man. Uh, Stroud coming off a bad game. It's in Houston. Houston coming off a loss to the Packers. I think they, they win here by multiple scores against the Colts. Um, Anthony Richardson returned last week um, in their win over the Dolphins. But he wasn't anything you know particularly impressive. Uh, 56 rushing yards, 10 for 24 passing, 129 passing yards. Uh, he didn't have the interceptions. Um, he did lose a fumble though. <laughs> so he still is turn over, turn the ball over. I just, I think Houston's such an opportunistic team, um, that if you make mistakes and slip up in any way, they're going to capitalize on that. Um, and I, I don't see Indy you know, going the the entire length of this game without making a mistake. I think Indy has the star power on offense to keep up with Houston's offense. But, um, again, I don't think they'll be able to limit those turnovers. I got to go Houston. New Orleans at the Chargers. Um, New Orleans, man, they just got, like, mollywopped by Denver on Thursday night. They've had kind of that mini buy. Um... Is Derek Carr playing? I don't think so. I, I think I saw Spencer Rattler starting again. Not that he's a bad quarterback, but, um, I mean, it, he might get Olave back. Uh, I'm not sure. I, haven't, I actually haven't seen anything on Olave. I know Rashid Shahid is out for the year, uh, which is a, a big loss for that offense. He was he was killing it. Olave uh, returned to practice. Um, he was limited due to his concussion, so he'll probably play, but... You know, it's just him and Kamara, really. really. I, I got to go with the Chargers. Chargers have a solid defense. They did lose to the Cardinals, but, um, you know, as long as they can keep the ball moving, uh, Chargers got this. Get this all day. Buffalo at Seattle. Give me Buffalo. Buffalo, I think, is a hot team right now. They're a great team. Seattle coming off a big win. Uh, it is hard to travel across the country and to play in Seattle, those two things do not pair well. Yeah, I could very well see Seattle winning this, but uh, I just think Josh Allen's playing very clean football, very good football, very competitive and intense football. He's got that motor. He's got that drive. I'm all in on Josh Allen, baby. MVP 2024. Let's go. Buffalo over Seattle. Uh, Carolina at Denver. Um, good thing I brought that energy on the last game because I don't think I could bring it on this game. Uh, Carolina how I described them before, a dumpster fire. I think that's pretty accurate. Denver has won more games than, you know, I, I thought they'd, they'd win all year so far. Uh, they're four and three. I think they're five and three over this game because I don't think the Panthers are going to be able to compete. Uh, you know, Sean Payton is a really good coach. And although the Broncos don't have that star power, they don't have any of those big names. They're not a flashy team. It sucks watching them because, it, when you watch them, it, it, it's just very, very, like, just basic, minimal football. Um, you know, short yardage plays, uh, hard-nosed defense. You know, I, I'm sure there's people out there that love watching the Broncos play this season. I'm not one of those people. I want the big, exciting, flashy plays. Sorry. It is what it is. You know, I like the cosmetics. Uh, put a little lipstick on that pig over in Denver. But I have Denver winning, um, which is crazy. Five wins for Denver. After week eight, that's I can't I can't believe that. Uh, Chiefs at the Raiders. The Raiders. Um, I mean, it's Brock Bowers, and that's it, right? Um, 
uh, Aiden O'Connell got hurt. He broke his wrist or thumb, something on his hand, around his hand in that vicinity. He's out. He's out for a little while. Gardner Minshew's coming in. I do think Gardner Minshew, being a gunslinger he is, taking risks, uh, could have this team competing a little bit, but not enough. Give me the Chiefs all day, and it will be very interesting to see if uh, the Raiders move Max Crosby. There have been reports that teams have been fielding uh, or, or calling in, and Raiders have been fielding calls for him. But, uh, I mean, you're not going to give him away for, you know, pennies on the dollar, right? He uh, He's a top five edge rusher in the league. Um, you know, he's a great locker room guy. Why wouldn't you want him as a cornerstone of, of your team? Why would you want to get rid of that, you know, if you're the Raiders? You you, you, you kind of have a solid foundation there in Vegas. You know, I, I think they they could be a year out. You get the right quarterback in that situation. Um, you know, you, you get a wide receiver one and uh, improve on the defense a little bit. They're right there. Chicago at Washington's our next game. Now, I'm not sure if Jaden Daniels is playing. Uh, if I had that answer right now, I could easily tell you who I think is going to win this game. If Daniels plays, it's Washington. If he doesn't, it's Chicago. I'm leaning Chicago. Why would you play your injured rookie quarterback who's looked like a stud um, <clears throat> and risk him getting hurt? You know, I, I, I get the NFL wants this game to be Caleb Williams versus Jaden Daniels, the one pick versus the two pick. Uh, it's very marketable. But, you know, as an NFL coach, GM, owner, franchise in general, um, do you want to risk the you know rest of the season over one game? Uh, I think they sit him. I think, like I said, Mariota is more than capable. I think he steps in, but I don't think he can do enough. I, th- I think Chicago is a very solid team. They're coming off a bye. They've been preparing for this, this game for two weeks uh, up to this point. Give me Chicago. Dallas at San Fran. Um, this should be an interesting game. Now, I remember when they these two teams played last, last year. Because uh, I specifically remember I was down in Miami for the uh, Dolphins-Giants game. And... Uh, I was sitting at a, at a bar, and they had a big, big, big TV on in the back. The game was on, and the Niners absolutely destroyed Dallas. Uh, it was awesome. It was great. But, unfortunately, um, you know, they, they had McCaffrey, and McCaffrey did a lot of that damage. Niners don't have McCaffrey this game. Uh, they also don't have Brandon Ayuk. Uh, they probably don't have Debo Samuel, who has pneumonia i think um I, all i know is he was in the hospital and if he has pneumonia he's probably not gonna play dallas on the other hand the other team coming off a bye uh has had two weeks to prepare i think this is a bit of a revenge game for dallas after what the niners did to them last season and uh, i think they come out hot i think see the lamb has a big big game uh I, I i think on the other side of the ball i think kittle's gonna have a big game too because there's not many other weapons in their offense right now um but uh, Dallas wants vengeance, and they're going to get it here. I hate picking Dallas, um, but uh, I, I have to here. Um, that would put the Niners at 3-5. and five. Ooh, tough start for San Fran. Give me Dallas. Giants at Steelers, Monday Night Football, wrap, rounding out the week. Uh, Giants just haven't impressed. They haven't shown up, uh, or at least they didn't last week. Uh, Pittsburgh did. Pittsburgh looks really good um which is surprising i didn't think the Steelers were going to be all that great this year i thought they're going to have a, you know an amazing defense because they always do you have tj watt um and a couple other playmakers on that team it's hard not to but i i i, I didn't think that that offense was gonna you know be all that that special and uh it is they're they're moving the football um you know giants defense didn't show up against philly don't have much faith they're going to show up here against Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, got to go Pitt. Got to go Pitt. Uh, Steelers country, let's mine. All right, that's going to do it. Uh, it's a shorter episode this week. Eh, not not so much, but sorry you had to listen to my voice the entire time and not J- uh, Griff, you know, talk about his Jets and, um, you know, add some color to this commentary. But uh, hopefully he's back next week. Hopefully he's back from the darkness retreat. Uh, follow us everywhere on social media, uh, either at you know Ice Bath Sports or Ice Bath Pod. Um, I think it's Ice Bath Pod on Twitter. Ice Bath Sports everywhere else. 
Uh, but go check us out. Follow us, subscribe, comment, like, do all that stuff, share. Get us out there. Get our names out there. Uh, I also want to hear your thoughts on this episode. I kind of did a little different did run rundown of all the teams on the games, um, which we normally don't do. We usually just kind of hone in on a different, couple different topics. I'm rambling. Uh, I'll shut up now. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. And as always, stay cool.